everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to dive into a topic that's important to me when I travel and for all the solo female travelers out there. When you're planning a solo travel trip, especially as a female, there are several key things to think about when you're choosing where to stay. And in this video, I'm going to share the technique that I use when looking for accommodations on my trips especially those that are at least a month long, but they apply no matter the length of your trip. I see videos all the time on YouTube geared towards couples traveling together and digital nomads, and they're really helpful, but I make videos that are focused on travel tips and destinations with the solo traveler in mind. I share videos at least once a week, and if that's your kind of thing, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps so much. And if you subscribe, please comment I subscribed and I'll be sure to respond. Okay, let's talk about planning. Planning solo travel can be overwhelming because it's all on you. So I've got a month of travel ahead of me in August, and let me tell you, deciding on where to go and where to stay has been quite the adventure. After hours of researching different destinations, I finally decided on Italy, Florence to be exact. It's been about four years since I last visited and I am so ready to go back, super excited. Once I picked my dates, the real challenge and for me the most important began and that is finding the right accommodations. It's very easy to get lost in the rabbit hole of searching for places to stay, especially for a longer trip like a month. So after researching lots of rental sites, I decided to stick with VRBO and Airbnb as their trusted platforms that I've used before. Some of these others that I found require a deposit that was the same amount as the monthly rent or had really bad reviews if there were issues that came up during the stay. I also found a couple where the review said, don't spend your money on this, it's a scam, I lost 2,000 euros. So, you know, it's really important to just book with a trusted provider. When you're looking for a place to stay, you need to think about what matters the most to you. So take some time to really think about this. For me, strong Wi-Fi is a must because I'll be working remotely. And many buildings in Florence are old, so I always check the reviews to make sure that the Wi-Fi is reliable and strong. I'll also be there in the summer when temperatures are warm, so I had to make sure that air conditioning was provided. You'd be surprised at how many places just provide fans. I also need a comfortable bed with fluffy pillows. I've stayed in places, especially in Europe, with harder beds or two soft beds and flat pillows and really dreaded going to bed each night, and that's no fun. Kitchen is another essential. I need to be able to cook simple meals or heat up some leftovers. And having natural light is important for my mood and productivity. So I always look for places with windows and plenty of light. And if I found one with a patio, that's just a bonus. An absolute non-negotiable for me is a safe and walkable neighborhood. All right, ladies, we all know considering safety is a must when traveling. So I always research where the safest neighborhoods are wherever I'm going to visit. Do not risk your well-being and even your life just to save some money. I've done another video on safety tips for solo travel and all the safety gadgets that you need, so be sure to check that one out as well. I'll link it below for you. I also need to stay in a walkable neighborhood. So for my trip to Florence, I chose a place that's on the other side of the Arno in a less touristy but still vibrant area. It's close to cafes and restaurants, and it's going to give me a more authentic Italian experience while still being walkable to all the main attraction. City centers can get really crowded and stressful, so I think this is gonna be a great choice for me. Keep in mind too that on your trip, you'll be going out to dinner at night and walking home at night. So you want a well-lit street, you want to make sure it's a safe neighborhood. I, I wanna have a cafe that's close by so that I can get my morning coffee, my croissant, and maybe do a little work. Now we know the things that are important to me when I'm traveling, so again, take some time and make out your list of what's really important for you. Here's the method I use to choose the perfect place. I first look for apartments that fit my budget and criteria on Airbnb and VRBO. I really examine the pictures, zooming in on them. That's so important. And I read the reviews from other guests. I usually already know the neighborhood or I've done some research on the neighborhood, so I know where I want to be. But if I see one that I'm unsure about on Airbnb or VRBO, then I'm gonna Google information about that neighborhood to see if it's gonna be a good fit. For Florence, my first choice of accommodation seemed perfect until I messaged the host 
and they mentioned that the utilities were not included. Now this could add anywhere from 150 to 400 euro to my cost for the place. Yikes, too much. So here's a pro tip for you. Communicate with your host. Communication with your host is key. Don't hesitate to ask questions about any additional costs or any concerns you might have. For example, is the street lit up well at night? Is it close to a cafe? Things like that. So you can communicate with your host even before you book. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. When my first choice fell through, I moved on to my second option. Unfortunately, it was undergoing renovations and the host couldn't provide pictures of an alternative unit that he offered me. So renting a place sight unseen is a definite no for me. Without any pictures, I had to pass. Finally, I decided on an apartment that was a bit pricier but had excellent reviews and all the amenities I needed and it was set up for instant approval booking, which was wonderful. So now I have a place to stay in Florence. That took a good chunk of my afternoon, but it was so worth it to make sure that I have a smooth and enjoyable trip. So to wrap things up, when planning a solo trip, especially as a female, I recommend you take your time to research and choose your accommodations wisely. Make a list of your must-haves, communicate with your hosts, and don't rush the process. Using this technique always sets my trip up for success from the start. Thanks for tuning in. If you found these solo travel tips helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more travel tips and adventures. Safe travels to you and see you next time.